Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 28th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Boyan today in his diary is making an important point about mobile application security. And the problem he's talking about here is what happens to your screenshot if you are moving an application into the background. Now on iOS, Android sort of work a little bit similar here. If you put an application in the background, your operating system will take a snapshot of the screen and save that particular snapshot in the application's container. So it is kind of protected from other applications. But if you then go back to the task switcher, you may see that screenshot, which of course may still contain sensitive information. Boyan has some sample screenshots here from one-time password tools like Google Authenticator. But of course, even more dangerous would be, for example, a password safe. Luckily, both Android and iOS allow you to prevent this from happening. On Android, there is a flag secure layout parameter that you can set to essentially indicate that there shouldn't be a screenshot being taken off the screen. Also in iOS, you do have the ability to actually modify the screenshot before it's being moved into the background. So this way you can, for example, blur the image and you can also turn off the ability to take screenshots using the built-in screenshot feature. This should really be done by all applications that do contain sensitive information, like for example, online banking applications, password managers, or just sort of internal applications, like think about HR applications or things like that, that may display confidential information. Well, and if you think you're done with news about a meltdown, not quite true. Security researcher Ulf Frisk published a blog post with details regarding the February patch from Microsoft and how it made things worse for the 64-bit version of Windows 7 and Server 2008 R2. The problem here is that a kernel memory table that's typically only readable by the administrator was for no apparent reason made read writable by any user. Now this is a simple bit flip and if you remember that a meltdown was all about how kernel memory is mapped into process memory. So as they made this change and as they decoupled these two memory areas, they apparently made this particular piece of memory world writable. Due to this new vulnerability, any logged in user would be able to manipulate the memory map or write and read arbitrary memory. A proof of concept exploit was released and Microsoft did address this problem in the March update for Windows 7 and Server 2008 R2. And well, if you talk about Meltdown, we also have to talk about Spectre. New variants of the Spectre vulnerability are being discovered and are being exploited. The latest one calls itself Branch Scope. Now, what's a little bit different here compared to the traditional Spectre attack is that instead of looking at the branch prediction cache, it actually tries to influence which branch is being executed. So the attacker can kind of of steer the code in directions that the attacker desires. The effect is pretty much the same as Spectre, in particular very close sort of to Spectre variant two, in that an attacker will be able to read out memory and also is able to then look at content inside XGX enclaves, which are meant to isolate code further. Now, the researchers who wrote a paper about this state that existing patches will not work against this vulnerability because, well, it's fundamentally a little bit different than these prior Spectre attacks. Now, Intel is saying that they actually believe some of the software patches released so far may also work against this new version. And well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.